Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array and with a deeper and sicker than usual voice. Adobe just released their new version of Premiere Pro and it's got a lot of great new features. And we're going to be taking a look at one in specific today, the newly revamped hue saturation curves. So in the old version of Premiere Pro, you had your hue saturation curve, which was this circle, which could be used to influence specific colors and their saturation. It was limited, but it did its job at the time. But that's now been replaced by five different curve interfaces with a lot more variability. We'll go over each one in specific, but to start out with, the five curves are hue versus saturation, hue versus hue, hue versus luma, luma versus saturation, and saturation versus saturation. So let's start with the first one, hue versus saturation. This first parameter is essentially the exact same as the circular hue saturation curve in previous versions, only in a more graphical form. Basically, the purpose of this curve is to designate a particular color range and isolate its saturation either to be more or less intense. Let's show you with an example. Here you can see that I have a normal shot of myself in front of a somewhat blue background. And the background has somewhat of a consistent color, but it's far from being perfectly uniform. In order to isolate this color, you can either estimate where this color would fall along the graph here, from left to right, or you can use the eyedropper tool here and select a segment to then have it automatically indicated along your curve. Using this method, you should see three dots appear. The center one is the specific color that you've selected, while the two other keyframes on either side act as boundaries for your changes not to go beyond. Raising this value here will increase the saturation of this specific color value the more you raise it up. And inversely, if you drop it down, it'll desaturate that particular color. And you can see a visual readout of this in the vertical direction. No saturation at the bottom, and lots of saturation at the top. You can also see that the shape of the graph underneath is more of a bell curve. This particular section is experiencing the full increase of saturation, while the other colors that are within this range that aren't exactly the same hue will experience less intense of a saturation increase. This helps to give more of a natural gradation to your modifications. If we made the boundaries really skinny, you'd see something more like this. But conversely, we can also make our boundaries much wider, decreasing the chances of harsh pixelation and poor looking color changes. So I think that you can start to see how these curves are more or less used, but there are more specifics that pertain to the rest of the individual graphs. The next one is hue versus hue. This graph works just like the last one, except instead of lifting the graph up or down to change saturation, this changes the color hues that are in your image. Raising or lowering the whole graph will shift the entire color spectrum of your video, but you can isolate a really specific hue and change that color alone. Let's try it out again with the background behind me here again. I can take the eyedropper tool here and make a selection to see where on the graph this particular blue color falls. Next, I notice that there's not really a lot of other blue at all in the shot. So I can widen the barriers here and make a much more slow and healthy gradient to my color changes. Now when we lift up the center marker here, we can see that the blue color is the only thing that's changing. You can see how well this tool does at isolating a particular color. And if you hold the shift button, you can see that our movements are locked to the vertical direction. If you have your color locked in and don't want to move it left or right at all, this can really help. You can also probably think of a few different uses for this particular effect. Changing the color of the sky to being a little bit more surreal or completely unrealistic. Or just using it to make the green summer landscape look a little bit more like the orange color of fall. This is my personal favorite curve and I'm happy that it's finally come to Premiere Pro. Okay, next up we have Hue versus Luma, and this graph works exactly like the other two before it, except instead of changing the specific hue or saturation of elements in your footage, it changes the brightness of elements with specific colors. You can isolate a particular section of your footage based on its color, and then you can tell that particular range of colors to either be more bright and luminous, or to be much darker. This tool you might not find yourself using too often, but when you need to adjust for some troublesome colors that are either distracting or not in line with the rest of your footage exposure, it can be an invaluable tool. Second to last, we have Luma versus Saturation. This graph is actually just a slight inverse variation of the previous Hue versus Luma curve. It works on exactly the same principle, except instead of changing the brightness of a particular color, it changes the saturation of elements based on their existing luminance or brightness. 
That might sound confusing, but let me give you an example here. So normally when you think of working with saturation, you might think of a basic saturation slider that pumps everything up or down. But this luma versus saturation curve allows you to be more specific with the control of your overall saturation. There's a lot of different possible applications here, but here's a basic one. Basically, in real life, darker elements will look less saturated. There's way more to it than that, but let's just focus on that for the moment. So let's say that we have an aggressive color grade and we notice that our color is seeping into everything. It's really also coming out in a lot of the black and dark areas here, which have a lot of color. If you have a stylistic goal, then cool, but this is less realistic and less professional, technically speaking. So if we want to take the luma saturation curve here and drop the left side of it so that the darker elements have little to no saturation, look at what that does to our effect. It keeps the black elements and dark areas from having any saturation and our image looks more professional as a result. This is just one way that you can use the luma saturation curve to make your footage look even more amazing. And finally, we have the saturation versus saturation curve. Yet another saturation tool that gives you more control than just the default global saturation slider. This one can be tricky for some people, but basically it allows you to specifically manipulate the saturation of parts of the image based on their existing saturation. It's hard to visualize until you see it. So let's take the curves here and let's treat it like a global slider adjustment to start with. Going up or down will increase or decrease the global saturation. But if we take the less saturated parts on the left, and drop them all the way down, and increase the most saturated parts on the right, we can see that what we're left with is an image where the most saturated parts of the video are the only ones that have color. We can easily see that the lipstick of our subject is the most saturated point of the image. And by moving the curve back here a little bit, we can bring it out a little bit more. This isn't the effect we want. It's just an example to show you how there's pre-existing differences based on saturation. If we increase the saturation of everything, there's a possibility that some elements in specific will look too saturated, even if the rest of the levels of the image look nice. So one way to use this curve would be to give a more even look to your saturation increase. By prioritizing elements that have less saturation to begin with, you can give a more even look to your footage. And guys, that's just been a brief run through of the new hue saturation curves for Premiere Pro. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, Feel free to check out all of our other tutorials right here at MotionArray.com. Thanks so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.